In this video, we explore the fascinating size proportions within our solar system. We take a look at the celestial bodies that populate our solar system and illustrate how far away and how large the planets would be if the sun were the size of a ping pong ball in a football stadium. Before we delve deeper into the size comparison of the solar system, our journey begins at the center of it all, our nearest star, the sun. Stars are massive glowing spheres of extremely hot gas composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. Inside stars, nuclear fusion occurs as hydrogen fuses to form helium. This process releases enormous amounts of energy, which is emitted as radiation. This is how our sun shines brightly in the sky, providing us with light and heat. Our sun, like many other stars, is orbited by planets. Unlike stars, planets do not emit their own light because they do not undergo nuclear fusion in their cores. Planets are essentially large chunks of rock or gas that merely reflect the light of their star. Compared to their sun, planets are generally much, much smaller. In the following, we will represent the size proportions of the sun and the planets to scale. However, due to the vast distances between them, we must first reduce the scale of their separations. Our sun is orbited by a total of eight planets. The closest planet to the sun is Mercury, which is also the smallest planet in our solar system. The second planet from the sun is Venus, which is very similar to Earth in size and mass. The third planet in the solar system is our home planet, Earth. It is the fifth largest planet in the solar system and the only one that contains liquid water on its surface. Next, we have the fourth planet in the solar system, Mars, also known as the red planet. Mars is only about half the size of Earth. The fifth planet in the solar system is also the largest, the gas giant Jupiter. Its most distinctive feature is the Great Red Spot, a massive storm that has been raging for over 300 years and is as large as the entire Earth. Next is Saturn, the second largest planet, known for its striking ring system that surrounds it. The following planet in the solar system is Uranus, with its typical bluish-green color. Finally, we have Neptune, the eighth and final planet of our solar system. The order of the planets can be easily remembered with the following phrase, my very eager mother just served us nachos. The first letters of each word correspond to the first letters of the planets. The planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are also called the inner planets. They are also referred to as terrestrial planets because they are mainly composed of rock and metal. They are characterized by a solid rocky surface, a relatively small size, a high density, and few or no moons. Additionally, the inner planets do not have ring systems. The so-called outer planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets are also known as gas and ice giants. They are primarily composed of hydrogen, helium, and other light elements. The outer planets are significantly larger. However, we can also see that the Sun is much larger and above all much heavier than the planets. Its diameter is about 109 times larger than that of Earth. The Sun accounts for about 99.9% .9 of the total mass of the solar system, while the planets make up only the remaining 0.1%. The total mass of all the planets is therefore only one thousandth of the Sun's mass. In the following, we want to visualize the hard-to-grasp size proportions. Let's imagine the Sun as large as a ping-pong ball. In this scale, the Sun would have a diameter of 4 centimeters. The Earth would be much smaller, only about 0.37 millimeters. At this scale, Earth would be roughly the size of a grain of sand. Now let's consider our solar system in this scale and the corresponding size proportions and distances of the other planets. The Sun, with its diameter of 40 millimeters, would be placed at the goal line of a football field. The first planet of the solar system Mercury would be located 1.66 meters away and would be only 0.14 millimeters in size. This would be roughly the size of a grain of salt. Next, we have Venus, which is 3.1 meters away from the ping-pong ball-sized Sun. In this scale, Venus has a diameter of 0.35 millimeters. Its size is comparable to that of Earth, so both would be about the size of a grain of sand. Earth follows closely behind, 4.3 meters from the goal line. As mentioned, it measures 0.37 millimeters. Its faithful companion, the Moon, is only about one centimeter away from it in this scale. Next is the red planet, Mars. It is located 6.55 meters from the ping-pong ball-sized Sun and has a diameter of 0.19 millimeters. Now we enter the vast space of the outer solar system. To do this, 
we have to leave the penalty area. The giant Jupiter is located 22.4 meters away, roughly in the middle of one half of the field, and has a diameter of 4 millimeters, comparable to a small marble. Just before the midfield line, 41.2 meters from the goal line, is Saturn. It has a diameter of 3.3 millimeters. We now cross the midfield line and reach, just before the opposing penalty area, the second to last planet in our solar system, Uranus, located 82.6 meters away. In this scale, it has a diameter of 1.5 millimeters. To reach the planet Neptune, we must even leave the field and head to the stands. Neptune is 129 meters away from the goal line and has a diameter of 1.4 millimeters. With Neptune, the series of official planets in our solar system ends. However, there is another well-known celestial body that was long considered the ninth planet and is also part of the solar system, Pluto. Since 2006, however, it has been classified as a dwarf planet because it does not fully meet the criteria to be considered a planet. In our scale, Pluto is located 170 meters from the goal line, outside the stadium, and has a diameter of only 70 micrometers. This is roughly the thickness of a human hair or the size of a dust particle. The solar system does not end with Pluto. Depending on the definition, there are different ways to define the boundary of the solar system. One way is through the influence of the solar wind. This consists of a stream of electrically charged particles that are ejected from the sun into space. The pressure of this particle stream extends up to a distance of about 525 meters from the goal line and is abruptly stopped there by the pressure of the interstellar medium. This boundary is called the heliopause and marks the end of the influence of the solar wind, and thus the end of the solar system. This is at least one possible definition of the solar system's boundary. There is also another definition, which we will discuss later, that extends the solar system much further. Now, let's talk about a human-made object that has traveled the farthest through space. It is the Voyager 1 space probe. Launched on September 5, 1977, it crossed the boundary of the solar system, entering the interstellar medium, on August 25, 2012. In 2025, the space probe is about 25 billion kilometers away from Earth. In our scale, this corresponds to a distance of 720 meters from the goal line. In the real scale, the probe travels at a speed of 60,000 km per hour through the interstellar medium. In our scaled-down model, the probe would cover about 4 cm per day, or 15 m per year. At this point, it is worth remembering that Earth in this scale is only the size of a grain of sand. So within our solar system, we are nothing more than a grain of sand in a football stadium. Even though the Sun appears enormous compared to Earth, there are much larger objects in our Milky Way, which we will explore in more detail in another video. The Sun is, so to speak, just an average cosmic object. In the following, we will again maintain our scale, where the Sun has the size of a ping-pong ball, and the length of a football field roughly corresponds to the distance between the Sun and the outermost planet Neptune. This illustrates the size of the cosmic objects explained in the following. For example, in the constellation Canis Major, there is the star VY Canis Majoris. It is a so-called red supergiant, more than 1,400 times the size of our sun. In our scale with a ping-pong ball-sized sun, this giant would be 57 meters tall, roughly the height of a multi-story skyscraper. VY Canis Majoris is therefore larger than the diameter of Jupiter's orbit around the sun. Although this supergiant is much larger than the sun, it only has about 35 times the sun's mass. However, it is around 300,000 times more luminous. Due to its vast distance from Earth, VY Canis Majoris is not visible to the naked eye in the sky. In our scale, where the Sun is the size of a ping-pong ball, the red supergiant would be 30 times farther away than the actual distance between Earth and the Moon in real scale. Despite the gigantic size of VY Canis Majoris, there is an object in the constellation Canis Venetici that literally puts the red supergiant in the shade. It is a supermassive black hole called TON618, with a mass equivalent to about 66 billion suns, making it one of the largest known black holes. This giant is 40 times the size of our entire solar system. In our scale, this black hole would have a diameter of more than 11 kilometers, which is about the size of a medium-sized city and a height greater than Mount Everest. In cosmic terms, our Earth is therefore nothing more than a tiny grain of sand in a large city. Let's now return to the previously defined boundary of the solar system, the heliopause. 
While the heliopause marks the end of the solar wind's influence, it does not mark the end of the sun's gravitational influence. Even beyond the heliopause, there are still objects in our universe that are significantly affected by the sun's gravitational pull and thus remain stable on their orbits, held together by its attraction. This refers to the so-called Oort cloud, a vast region made up of billions of rocky and icy bodies composed of frozen water, ammonia, and methane. It marks the boundary of the sun's gravitational influence and may extend to a distance of up to 15 trillion kilometers from the sun. In our scale, where the sun is the size of a ping-pong ball, this would correspond to a spherical region with a radius of about 430 kilometers around the football stadium. In the Oort cloud, it is no longer the solar wind that dominates, but rather the sun's gravitational force. This gravitational force keeps the objects in the cloud on their distant orbits, even though they are also influenced by other stars. If a body in the Oort cloud is pulled into the inner solar system due to gravitational disturbances, such as by nearby stars or the tidal forces of the Milky Way, it can become visible as a comet. At this point, it should be explicitly noted how astonishing it is that, in our scaled-down model, a ping-pong ball-sized sun exerts its gravitational pull over a distance of 430 kilometers. Although gravity is the weakest of the four fundamental forces in physics, compared to the strong nuclear force, the weak interaction and the electromagnetic force, it has the greatest range. Thus, the solar system can also be defined by the sun's gravitational pull and in this case, by the Oort cloud, which marks the boundary of the Sun's dominant gravitational influence and consequently, the end of the solar system. The Oort cloud has never been directly observed, as the objects themselves do not emit light and are too far from other light sources, such as the Sun, to reflect light. Even light would take 1.5 years to reach there from Earth. The Oort cloud is essentially only a theoretical prediction based on the orbits of long-period comets. These comets come from distant regions and often take thousands or even millions of years to return from their orbits. Dutch astronomer Jan Oort postulated the existence of this region based on cometary orbits in the 1950s. As previously mentioned, the objects in the Oort cloud are primarily influenced by the Sun's gravitational field, but other stars also exert gravitational effects. The closest star to us is Proxima Centauri, located about 4.2 light-years away. This means that the light from this star takes 4.2 years to reach us. In our scale, where the Sun is the size of a ping-pong ball, Proxima Centauri would be 1,150 kilometers away. If we take this star distance of 4.2 light-years as an average value in our nearby interstellar environment, there would be about 400 stars distributed across the Earth's surface in our scaled model. However, our home galaxy, the Milky Way, contains around 250 billion stars. Even in our scaled model, our Milky Way would cover an enormous area equivalent to 70 times the Earth-Moon distance. And even then, we are ultimately only talking about a single galaxy. In our observable universe, there are an estimated 100 billion such galaxies. At this point, we will likely again struggle with our imagination to truly grasp such cosmic dimensions. In another video, we will also examine the Milky Way in a scaled-down model to better understand these incomprehensible sizes. And with that, our journey through the solar system comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.